All right. We got our cat and we're ready to go. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nat. I'm a theologian. And this week I'm going to talk about the story of Martha and Mary because my mom asked about it. <laughs> Martha and Mary, besides being in the story of Lazarus, which I've already done a video on, are also featured in Luke 10. Once again, I'm using the New Revised Standard Version, so I will first read the story. So it's Luke 10, 38-42. Now, as they went on their way, he, Jesus, entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. So I wanted to look into this, <laughs> especially that last sentence. So I went back into the Greek to see what phrasing it used. So in the Greek, instead of saying better things, it uses the word Tain agathain. And agathain is the form of good which refers to like good deeds, having a good conscience, being morally upright. So it's not actually like just better, it's referring specifically to spiritually good. And then the fact that it goes on to say not only is she learning how to be morally and spiritually good, but it will not be taken away from her, which to me is echoed in the next book, John, with the story of the Samaritan woman at the well, where Jesus says that the water that he gives will give eternal life. It lasts forever. What he is preaching to Mary will not be taken away from her. So Martha's reaction to this tells me that the point of the story is that if you are distracted by the material things in the world, you may forget to look at the spiritual things or learning, really. It's the importance of realizing that you have to learn from the people around you, that you are able to learn from the people around you always. If we place this into context, the next chapter of Luke Luke 11, verses 9 to 10, it quotes Jesus as saying, So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. So even though you're busy or you think that you've already given all that you can to the world, you have to remember that everyone you encounter has something new to teach you. This is the importance of knocking. You have to be ready to learn. You have to be ready for someone to come up to your door, so to speak, and teach you new things, to open your eyes. So I actually really loved that mom asked me about Martha at this point in time because I've been reading Sufi philosophy lately and I've really been enjoying this book, <laughs> The Heart of Sufism by Hazra Inayat Khan. And there's this fantastic section where he talks about the fact that to learn, you have to unlearn. So you have to empty out yourself and your preconceived notions, the way that the world works, in order to learn more about how the world works. Um, that, that's why Sufism places emphasis on looking to their teachers and modeling their behavior in much the same way that Jesus does in the New Testament. I think that probably 
noticing the difference between your level on the ladder of spiritual perfection and your teacher's level on the ladder um, and attempting to imitate your teacher will show you that you can and should learn from their life experiences, from whoever your teacher is. The context in which their ladder is placed will give you a lot to learn about their spiritual journey. Noticing the difference and attempting to imitate your teacher will show you that you are an empty vessel to be filled, to use a Sufi metaphor. It's about looking at the other person and recognizing that there's a gap in your levels. Your cup can always get bigger to be filled more with the knowledge. <laughs> So the last place I will leave this is with what I thought was a great comparison. Um, <clears throat> the poem Wild Geese by Mary Oliver. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clean blue air, are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. So the story of Martha and Mary, not to mention <laughs> Sufism teaches us that our place is to learn from those around us. We're all part of the symphony of life so to speak.